Welcome to Differential Equations, Chapter 2, Section 4. In this section, we will be learning about linear versus nonlinear equations. So in this chapter, we actually have two theorems. They're labeled 241 and 242. Starting off with 241, we have the general function form y prime plus p of t times y is equal to some function g of t. We can say that a solution exists, so Solution exists on the interval i, and this is dependent on both p of t and g of t. p of t exists on some interval, and g of t exists on some interval. So we'll look at these two intervals and see where they overlap, and then we have the initial condition, and we can see exactly where the solution will exist. This will make more sense later on once we get doing some examples. Next we have 2, 4, 2. And this theorem, um, it's a nonlinear equation, and it um, states that the function f with variables t and y exists on some interval, and then the partial derivative of f with respect to t, or the, inde the independent variable, will um, exist on some interval. And with these two, we compare them along with the initial condition, and we can say that some solution exists on interval i. So we will go ahead and look at some examples. This first example we have is ty prime plus 2y is equal to 4t squared. This is actually nonlinear right now, but we'll move it to a linear um, equation. So we're going to divide t by each factor, which gives us y prime plus 2 over ty plus, or is equal to 4t. So now we have some uh, linear equation and we need to find p of t and we need to find g of t's interval. So p of t is going to be equal to 2 over t and g of t is equal to 4t. We know that p of t um, cannot equal 0. So t cannot equal 0 for p of t. That is because the denominator cannot equal 0. g of t um, has all real solutions. So this just means that t cannot equal 0 for all of this. So we know that some solution exists on... I'm just going to write this out instead of using the notation exists on some interval negative infinity to zero union <clears throat> u to infinity. And now we look at this initial condition. So we have y of 1 is equal to 2. That means that we can take this left side out because we have x equals 1. x can never equal 1 because this is all negative values. So our final solution will be some function exists on the interval 0 to infinity. The next problem we have is dy dx is equal to 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 all over 2 times the quantity of y minus 1. We also have the initial condition y of 0 is equal to negative 1. So we're going to use theorem 2, 4, 2 and we're going to say well, let's first off start off by um, finding the interval on this initial one. So we'll just call this f of x and y. And um, we know it can't have y is equal to 1 because we can't have 0 in, in the denominator. So next up, we'll take the partial derivative of this function with respect to y. So we have that, and that is going to be equal to, so we know all of this is the same. So it's the partial derivative, essentially, of y, uh, of 1 over 2 times quantity of y minus 1. This will go to negative 3x squared plus 4x plus 2 all over 2y minus 1 squared. And we're trying to find the interval where this exists 
and this is also y cannot equal 1. Now these two are the same, and because of theorem 242, we can start off at this point, and we can make any rectangle as long as it doesn't contain any solution that y is equal to 1. So we can't really write anything down, we can just put this, this um, interval down, but for a deeper understanding, you know that on the Cartesian plane that you have a point, so it'd be at 0, comma, negative 1, you could make any rectangle left, right, negative infinity to positive infinity as long as it doesn't contain some y value of 1.